Okay, what I did on this side, I forgot to turn the camera on, sorry, I removed this panel. Um, so, there is a, it's in the screen here, on this side there's a, a nut and a bolt. You have to remove off this side a larger bolt right here behind the foot peg. These three Allen bolts here and two here that remove the master cylinder off the rear. Now it's still attached down here and I'm going to pop to see how this comes off. Oops, that just came right off. Okay, so that's free. So I'm going to try to release this cable here and it goes down to a brake light switch down here. So let's see where that plugs in. I don't know. Alright, it, it plugs right into the frame up here, so I'm just going to unplug that from the frame. Let's see if that will sit there for a minute. It has unplug it up here, then trying to remove the brake light switch, which doesn't look that bad, but I don't like removing those weird little clips like that. So we'll just unplug that here and bring that down. And so that is released. And by the way, I really don't like these chrome side panels. I'm debating on painting them or not. I might just leave them for now. Because the rest of this bike is chrome and it's I just don't really like the look of it. But it is what it is. And this is not going to be a show bike. This is going to be just probably a commuter slash touring bike. So I'm not really that concerned about it. Um, as long as it functions properly, that's what I'm more concerned about. All right. I have not drained the, the fluid out of the final drive yet. I did check the fill plug. I don't know if that's in. I did check the fill plug and it, it will come loose. So... I'm okay with that. I always check the fill plug before I check before I drain it. Um, so let's see where this wire goes for this speedo. See if it's worth just unplugging that. Yeah, it's right here. So I'm just gonna unplug that and leave that leave that be. So one less thing to disconnect. So I I can just. Pull this out. Feed it through here so it'll feed through okay. Because I know they use shims and things on this Speedo, and uh, to me it's just easier to cut wire ties than remove that. That's what I did on my K-Bike and it worked just fine. And I like to clean those connectors anyhow. So that's disconnected. Alright, so we got those two right there that we disconnected. Brake light switch and the speedometer. So we're good there. It's out of the way. Alright. So I think the next step I'm going to do is go ahead and drain the final drive. That way when it's sitting on the floor, it's not leaking all over the place. If it leaks on its side or something, I don't know if it will, but um, it's just better to get the fluid out of it now, I guess. Access to everything in here to um, get to take the final drive off. Um, I used a 6 millimeter Allen head to loosen these bolts here and now I'm using a 8 to take this rear bracket off back here which goes to the looks like it's also holds on the muffler so I'm gonna take those out and continue moving forward to get to the final drive and and uh, take the swing arm off do the service on the swing arm and the final drive so that's my plan here so, take these off, 
should probably use a T handle would have been a little easier. That bolt that just fell out was for the gear shifter. I've already loosened that one up. So the long one goes in here. Probably all the same length, but I'm not sure. I've never taken this bike apart. First time I'm servicing it. And the thing I'm not liking about this so far is it looks like all the bolts are dry. Like if anybody's had this off before, they didn't use any type of anti-seize on it. So hopefully we don't come across bolts that are majorly corroded on and really tight. better in fighting with this foot peg. This kickstand out of the way. And something is still holding on, so maybe I'm missing a bolt somewhere. back here. Looks like there's two bolts back in here that's holding this one. Looks like there's six millimeter also. We also have an auxiliary wire here that I need to take off. Actually, there's just one bolt back here holding this one. And I know the book says to remove the exhaust. We're going to see if we can leave it on. See if it's something we can work around. And let's see if we can get this silver end plug. Yep. And try to leave the bolts in place. This bolt goes right here. This bolt goes up here. I try to put my bolts back in bolt holes if I can. Um, these, if I put them back in, they'll be in the way because we have to take this bolt out here. So I'm going to go ahead and set this down out of the way. It doesn't appear that the exhaust is going to get in the way here, so we're going to probably leave it for now. And uh, we're going to move on and see what all we have on the other side to take off. Okay. All right, so we're going to drain the final drive. Um, it's a 19 mil bolt. I broke it loose already. And we're just going to let this drain out. Let's see how bad it looks or good it looks. Red transmission fluid, or rear end fluid. It's actually very clean, which I should have asked the previous owner if he had already done all the service on this. Because that, that rear end fluid looks brand new. Um, and Looking at the drain plug, there's barely anything on it. The fluid looked pretty good. Alright, so 
So we're going to move on to removing the final drive. We have a couple bolts we need to take out. Um, I'm going to pull this final drive and take a look at the splines there. And if they look like they have just been lubed up and it looks fine, then there's really no point in pulling everything off. So we'll take a look at that and see. I did check for play in this uh, uh, swing arm, and there's no play at all in the swing arm. And so I think the bearings are okay there. So off to a good start so far. All right, next I'm going to do is remove the caliber. I broke the bolts loose already. Let me get this out of the way. It's not hooked anything right now. Um, eight millimeter Allen on this. Rear bolt has a washer. The front bolt has a bracket on it, so that holds the um, speedometer sensor in the rear end here. Um, that one has a bracket. It doesn't have a washer, so you know the one with the washer goes in the back. See so how yeah, it has this bracket on it here? Hold that in place. We're just going to set that there for now. And I should compress that some. Put it back on if we can. Yeah, we can compress it later, but the uh, rear pads look brand new on this, so that's a good thing. All right, I'm going to pause the video for a minute and find a place to hang this, uh, get some wire or something to hang this caliber up out of the way so it's not dangling in the way the whole time. Okay, a couple things real quick. One thing I said earlier which was wrong, this is not the speedo sensor. I made a mistake. This is the anti-lock brake sensor on this bike. Um, I believe it was the K-Bike I was working on. The speed sensor was in the rear like this. So it's a little different. This is the anti-lock brake sensor. But <clears throat> the next step I did was I removed this um, little cover here. can't think off the top of my head what it's called. But just took the two screws out here to remove this boot. And then heated this bolt up because I didn't know if this had ever been off. And from the factory they use a um, uh, thread locker on here which um, the, there's a warning in the book and in a lot of other places that if you don't heat this up to melt this thread locker on here, um, I think it's heated up to 145 degrees, I believe it is, that there's a chance you could take the threads out with this and damage your swing arm. Um, so I did heat this up to 145 degrees, used a 12 millimeter Allen to break it loose, and this one broke free fairly easy. I had to use a breaker bar on it so it's, it is torqued very high. Um, but the good news is when I took it out there's no thread locker in it. So that means this has been a part before hopefully to service this uh, final drive um, and the uh, drive shaft going through. Hopefully it's been lubed and everything's been done properly. We'll see here in a minute. Getting ready to take it out. I've got the bolts loose on this side and on this side and the lower uh, link here also broken loose so I'm just gonna take these out and we'll check the check the axle out All right, so I just have to reposition the camera take this out I don't know how much you can see with me in the way right, I'm gonna have to get my Allen back over here to get this off a little snug. Get around here to the other side. Put a little scissor jack underneath of it just to steady it. I'm trying to hold it so it doesn't just drop. I think it's pretty much loose. 
take this bottom bolt out here. a little bit on this side here, this pin. There, now the pin's out of the way. And she comes. pause this for just a minute okay I don't know if you can see this or not but uh, looking at the final drive here the splines look really good and there is some lubrication in here so I'm real happy with this and this looks like it was serviced relatively recently um, now I know the gentleman I bought this bike from bought this bike from a friend of his who was who, who did own a BMW shop and I'm starting to wonder if he serviced this bike before he sold it to his friend he told him that the bike was ready to ride everything was done um, and when I drained the fluid how clean that fluid was I was real happy with that so um, now I, I've, I'm kind of debating if I want to go ahead and pull everything off because everything looks so well taken care of. So I might just stop here and just lube this up and um, put it back together and then you know just ride it. It looks like everything's been maintained well. I, I don't want to do a service that has already been done. But then again, I'm in this far, so I might as well pull the rest of it out and just check it and that way it's peace of mind and know that it's completely done. So I'm going to think about it but uh, I'm going to probably pop this end of the drive shaft uh, off here and just look and check the, the back end of the final drive as well. Okay, I did a little cleaning on this part of the drive shaft. It looks nice and clean. I noticed once I cleaned it there is a little bit of wear here in a couple places. The teeth all look fine. I don't know if it's picking it up on this camera. So <clears throat> I think it's okay. I'm going to lube it all up. I'm going to, I'm thinking since I'm already this far into it, I might as well pull the rest of the final, uh, or rest of the swing arm off and the rest of the drive shaft and take a look at it and make sure it all looks good. All right, next what I'm going to do is just take some Stavarog's paste and I'm really going to coat this down pretty good get a lot in here and before I put this back on the final drive unit um, so paint it in there pretty good I'm going to put this back together now so it's you know one less piece laying around the garage while I'm working on other things. I, like I said, I have a very small garage and a lot of stuff in here and a lot going on. So I um, just want to try to stay a little organized. So I right, got that painted on there pretty good. Let's see if you can... And we'll put it back in the final drive itself. Take an in-camera view there. Move it a little bit. Already cleaned in here. And we're going to just line this up. And I'm going to take a rubber hammer and just give it a little thump to pop it in there into place. There we go. Back in. And then we'll apply more Stavarogs when we put this all back together. Alright, so what I've done next, I went ahead and removed the shock. 
is a 14 millimeter on one side bolt with a 15 on the right side the nut that holds it on so I just took the took it out it released the swing arm I broke the swing arm loose on both sides now this side over here still seem to have a little bit of the Loctite in it from the factory I didn't heat this up um, it just looks like maybe somebody didn't clean it the last time they serviced it came off really easy it wasn't real tight so um, and took the lock nut off on the other side and the bolt just like that so I'm gonna pull this out next other side Let's see if this can make it all the way out of here with the shock in the way so hope I don't have to remove the whole shock. slides right out so good so we get that out of the way I'm glad I chose to go ahead and do this it's not very difficult I'll pop the axle out here in a minute and we'll take a look at that next all right pop the drive shaft off looks great both ends look good it's been lubed so that's nice so it's good peace of mind just to go ahead and pop this out I'm going to clean it up a little bit, put more stabberogs on it, and start putting it back together. <laughs> 